What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be making one of my batches of my famous bone broth. Uh, really excited to make it. I uh, haven't made it in a little while, but I am going to do a little walkthrough of how to make it. Uh, probably one of the most beneficial, nutritious things you can put into your body. Coincides really good with fasting, which I just talked about the other day. And today I'm going to show you step by step how I do it. It's going to be more than just today. It's going to take me about 48 hours to make it. But for you guys, it'll just be a couple minutes. So let's get started. So we got our big bag of bones. This bag's gonna be full of chicken bones, beef bones, a whole lot of rib bones. Uh, obviously, we wanna, they've been in the freezer. You should always be freezing these. Just save them up while you can. We're gonna separate them up as best as you can. The most important things are gonna be that we are going to crush a lot of these bones. So, like I said, you can see they're in big chunks right now. The big thing I need to get is the rib bones out, and they're just gonna go right into the pot because there's no chance I'm gonna be able to break those rib bones. But all of the chicken bones and the smaller beef bones will be crushed up with the hammer on the cutting board. If you have a mallet, I just don't have one. I always use my hammer from construction. Uh, and those will all go into the pot, and that's gonna be step one. So right now we got everything separated out. I'm pretty happy because these rib bones, you can see are just full of a bunch of marrow and they're sideways cut. So those are gonna make a really, really good bone broth. That marrow is gonna melt into the broth. But now that we have everything separated out, we chunk down the little bones. These are about the only bones I have left that need to be smashed down. So it's really simple. What I do is I just leave them in the bag, put them on my cutting board. And if you hit the bone right in the middle, what you'll see is, cracks right in half. They all do. It's really, really easy. It doesn't even take a lot of force. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this bag and I'm going to crack them all in half because I really want that marrow to kind of melt out of the bones and into the broth. And it doesn't matter about piecing them up too small right now because once they heat up in there, we'll be crushing them up over the next 48 hours. And what you'll find is when they're finally done, there will be no bones left. It'll be a paste fine little chips of bone and we will strain that out of it before we end up drinking any of it. But these will get smashed and they will go in there and then we'll be on to the next step. So now everything is in the crock pot. I got it on low, it's starting to heat up. Everything's still frozen. And this is when we get into one of the most important parts of the whole bone broth. Uh, most people skip some of these steps that we're gonna do in my bone broth. And if they do it, if you just boil the bones, you'll get benefits, but you'll get about 10% the benefits you really could. So the first thing you have to start out with is we're gonna do about a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. We're gonna slowly drizzle it all over the bones. Then what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna water this down enough that it covers the bones with water. We want there to be a lot of acidity in there. It's gonna pull a lot of the nutrients right out of the bones. And that's gonna be our next step. So now we filled it up with about three inches of water Plenty of vinegar, we just diluted it down, it's covering everything. We're not gonna fill it the rest of the way for about two hours. So right now we're gonna leave it on low and our goal is just to let that vinegar pull a lot of the nutrients and start to pull, like break down those bones. So from this point on, just make sure it's all well mixed. The big thing too is the bones are in there, they're smashed up, we want all that marrow melting out. But we wanna leave the fat, we wanna leave the tendons, we wanna leave every little ligament, every extra piece on there too, cause that's gonna melt into the broth and just make it that much better for you. Uh, like even right here, like I said, I just got a big chunk of meat that my spoon is stuck on. So throw it in low, throw the lid on, and we'll be back in about two hours. So now she's been sitting on low for about two hours, maybe two and a half. And take that lid off. You can see some of the fat starting to melt. Color's changing, it's getting orange. It's exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to add a half cup of avocado oil. This is key. If you're making bone broths and you're not adding fat to it, you're not gonna get the same benefits. Sure, there is a lot of saturated fat you're gonna get from all the fat on the meat and the bones melting, but the added fat helps you extract the nutrients out of the bones. Fat is used in most situations to extract nutrients out of stuff. So when you add the fat, you're gonna pull a lot more nutrients out of those bones. 
and I like avocado oil. Avocado oil functions a lot like MCT oil, but it's a little bit more natural. It's a little bit easier digestible, and I like that it is liquid at room temperature, so I tend to use it. So now that we have this all mixed in, we're gonna fill this up with water all the way to the brim, and we're gonna let this cook on low for the next 36 to 48 hours. And over that time period, we'll be checking in with you, but we will be smashing these bones up. And you'll find that over time, they will very literally crush into pieces. These little chunks of tendon and fat will melt. The bone marrow inside of these will melt into the broth and we will get uh, extremely, extremely nutrient dense bone broth. So she's all full. Probably about two gallons of water in here. After we strip everything out of it, probably end up with about a gallon of bone broth, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty excited about this batch. Uh, don't worry about seasoning it yet. Don't worry about adding anything to it yet. I will show you the exact perfect way to do that later, but you don't want to put it in too early or you'll overcook all the spices. So for now, put it on low and leave it alone for at least the next six hours. You can stir it every hour or so, but we won't have anything to do for about six hours. So right now we're sitting about 36 hours. We're going to strain it here in a couple hours. We've been mixing it consistently every hour. Uh, I was just going to say, when you go to strain it, you're going to want something like this. If you have some cheesecloth, that's going to be even better to lay in here because the bones really like to hold that liquid in. Uh, but make sure you scoop it into the strainer at least for the first half because if you try to pick this big thing up and pour it, uh, you could end up doing what I did last year and I got second degree burns on my belly. So uh, just make sure you're being safe with it because this is a giant pot of boiling water. If you let it cool down too much before you do it, it will kind of collagenize on the top which we don't want. In about 42 hours right now, she's ready to be strained. So now it's strained, we cleaned everything, we put it back into the dish, and we're gonna do the most important part, we're gonna season it. So I'm gonna eyeball them, I've done it many times, but you're gonna use one tablespoon onion powder, half a tablespoon garlic powder, black pepper to your liking, it will get really spicy if you do too much, and we're gonna do some Italian herbs. Uh, but the most important part is you need to get yourself some of the powdered uh, broth base, uh, I get the chicken broth, but this is where it gets all its delicious flavor that makes it taste like a really, really good bone broth when you make it. Uh, and we are going to use about two tablespoons of this, and obviously you can add more if you want more flavor, but that's what we're going to do. So now she's all finished up. She is ready to drink. A uh, couple options here. You can't leave it in the crock pot for much longer, maybe one more day. So drink as much as you can. Uh, if you need to keep it, which I will be doing, I will be freezing it. Uh, and the nice thing with this is if you want, you want to do it with your family, you can throw a bunch of celery, a bunch of carrots in there. You can even throw meat in here and make a extremely, extremely nutritious dinner. So that's how it's done. Bone broth is finished. It came out absolutely perfect. I really love it. Uh, if you're going to do this, uh, my recommendations for how to intake it would be to either do a bone broth fast, very, very different from fasting, but you just spend about two days doing nothing but drink this bone broth for every meal. Super satisfying and causes more benefits than you can imagine. Or you can just drink it like one meal a day. I recommend taking it on an empty stomach. The effect it has on the lining of your intestines and for GI problems is incredible. Uh, but do a little research and you'd be surprised how amazing bone broth is for you when you make it right. And if you guys like these videos, you want to see more recipes, you want to hear more about paleo, you want to learn some healthy things, healthy tricks, snazzy little recipes, just let me know. More to come.